Sean Terry here, and I am honored to be here with uh, a gentleman. I, I it's truly inspired me. Um, I saw him speak at our at our event at the Scale and Escape Summit, and uh, he literally blew everybody away. Um, the man, Jesse Itzler. How you doing today, sir? Good. I got to match your energy. I got. I got to. Step. Yeah, match your energy. I'm good. You got the hundred percent hat. You're here. You're one hundred percent, man. I'm gonna keep up with you. <laughs> just a reminder. Just, just, just a reminder. So, uh, so for you guys who don't know Jesse, which ninety nine point nine percent of the people on this planet do know him, but if you're the one percent that doesn't know, um, he's the founder of Marquee Jet, um, who who basically sold to Warren Buffett Net Jets, creator of Zika Water, Coconut Water, sold the Coca-Cola, owner of the Atlanta Hawks, New York's Times best-selling author, Living with the Seal, which I read, which was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I've actually read the book and listened to the audiobook. Both of them are amazing. <laughs> actually, a Navy SEAL, right? Not a SEAL, but a Navy SEAL. Um, founder of the Rapidly Growing, which is awesome, the Facebook group, uh, We Do Heart Stuff, which is amazing. Just turned 49 years old, 49 years young. Um, ran and completed, I don't know how many hundred mile ultra marathons. I know it's at least one, right? <laughs> um, married uh, to a beautiful Sarah Blakely, founder of the billion dollar company Spanx. And you have two tough boys <laughs> that I get to watch on Instagram. Yeah, I actually have three. I have, I have four kids total now. Wow. So I have, yeah, I have four, four kids. Yep. So you are, you are definitely a big See all this? <laughs> all these lines? These are new. <laughs> Those are new. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I know. I got I got some too because I'm 47. <laughs> but uh, so you have an incredible, um, you know, resume. Uh, you know, uh, that accomplished some amazing things at such a young age, and uh, we're real excited to uh, to to basically have you here. So um, in your in your you know in your you know your group, we do hard stuff. So let me tell you. So why should people do hard stuff? First off. Well, first of all, I, I love the introduction, and I love that you told all the wins and none of the losses. Yeah. So I've had plenty. Well, I've had plenty of losses along the way. I just don't want to. Who wants to talk about that or put that into it, your your bio? Um, but that's part of the reason why I started this group. We do hard stuff, mm -hmm. is because you know we we spend so much time trying to avoid pain, and part of being an entrepreneur, part of being a business owner, uh, or just life is going through periods of, you know things that are hard and I wanted to, I spent a lot of time trying to create a pattern in my, an environment in my head that when things get hard, I keep going. Hmm. So I'm a big believer that, you know, most people can do the first 95% of whatever it takes to be great or to have success, but it's that last 5% that where, where all the gold is that a lot of people don't want to go there, start. And um, so I started this group to just, to just create a, bring awareness to the fact that great things happen when you get uncomfortable. Right. So, so let me ask you a question. What's the hardest thing you've ever done? Being a parent probably is the hardest thing. It's, it's a, a work in progress. Uh, presents different challenges that like they, they, they didn't give me that manual before, uh, before parenthood. Um, that's been very hard physically. I've ran a hundred miles. I, you know, nonstop that put me in a wheelchair for four days. I, that's amazing. Uh, I'm, I, I, you know, I've made money, but I've also lost money mm -hmm. and losing money has been a very hard thing. You know, as a businessman, you know, not everything that you do works and that's hard. So, you know, every, every day, but I, every day I try to put myself on in a position mm -hmm. first in the morning where I do something that's super hard. And I take a freezing cold shower first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. and it never gets easier. It really doesn't. But when I walk out of the shower, I'm like, who's going to beat me? I've already <laughs> self-inflicted the damage. Yeah. You know, like, what, what, I'm, you know, I'm not going to get out-negotiated because of endurance. You know, I, can, I'm gonna, I can endure. Right. So uh, I, try to put, I try to really work hard on, on that. So, you know, so that part of the brain. So the doing hard stuff, how can you, how can you like relate that to like business? So, you know, and doing the extra 5%. So, you know, from how is that translated into your business life for, for someone that's now, you know, they're watching and they're saying, okay, you know, um, you're going to be speaking at, you know, extreme freedom and, you know, 
you know, for someone who ha hasn't endured the hard times of being an entrepreneur yet, you know, what can they do to to basically break into that? You know, they can do the 95%, it's that 5% that's going to get them to the next level. That 5%, what can they do to to basically endure that pain, I guess you could say, or push through to the but, next level? Yeah, I think well, even before that, I think part of, of the journey of being an entrepreneur is just is being comfortably comfortable being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of a lot of this a lot of the wins come from being in a in a position where you're just totally exposed. So I mean, I just wrote a book, mm -hmm. you know, living yeah. with the city, breakfast it. You know, you write a book and you're going to get book reviews. You're going to get people that say, "I love it," "I hate it." Yeah. You know, and that, that lives on Amazon forever. Those reviews live forever. You want to talk about being vulnerable? Put yeah. a book out into the universe. Um, but with that vulnerability comes the opportunity to be successful. And that's a really important lesson that I learned early on and something that's carried out in the spirit of being an entrepreneur. But I, I believe that really hard tests of endurance and things that are really hard in general that you go through, um, you know, give you, um, translate very well into business. And um, so that's... I, and I've learned so many lessons from that. For example, you know, when I started running, I could run two miles. Right. Okay, I put a self-imposed limitation on myself that that's the distance that I, if I could go two miles, I'm a runner. Mm -hmm. And I, I limited myself in, in how far I could really go by that definition that I gave myself of, of a two-mile runner. Well, fast forward, nothing in my body changed. The same body that God gave me then, when I could run two miles, I still have. I'm not super strong. Sean, you look like you could get me in a headlock in eight seconds. <laughs> uh, and nothing has changed. Same legs that God gave me. But I took that two-mile body and changed the way I thought. And really, I call it the hundred mile. The two-mile body became a hundred-mile mind. Mm -hmm. And I ran a hundred miles through pain, nonstop, you know, and finished. Wow. If I was under-indexing by 50x... If I was like 50, I had 50 times more than I thought I had in me. Well, if you apply that to all the other areas of your life, so like, okay, am I under-indexing in my relationship? Am I under-indexing in business? Wow. Am I under-indexing in, in the goals? So, you know, there's a lot of lessons that can be learned by doing things that are hard because you realize what the hell you're made of and what's inside you and what makes you tick and what you're capable of and what your trigger points are. You don't get that in a comfort zone. You just don't. Nothing, you know, so many of us are in a routine. Uh -huh. And I was in a routine. I'm, I'm still in a routine. Routines are great, but they could be a rut. Right. You don't get better in a routine. Right. So by getting to the point where you're doing things that are uncomfortable, you're experiencing, you know, you're opening yourself up to like seeing like what are your limits. Right. Yeah, and I, you know what, I think that's, uh, in, in the way you phrased this, in, in the book, Living with a Seal, that um, that I read uh, was phenomenal. Anyone, I, I highly suggest you read that before, and I know you got a new book coming out that we can talk about, but I uh, highly suggest reading that, because one one uh, one thing I got out of it, you know, was that the under-indexing, you, especially when you're doing the pull-ups, you only thought you could do X, but then you ended up doing Y, and it completely changed everything. And you said something very important at the Scale and Escape Summit that made an impact on me and how it kind of relates, I believe, to the, the business world, is that you'll pick up the phone and talk to anybody at any time, anywhere. And a lot of people, they go, you know, even, you know, pick up the phone talking to you, they're, you know, I mean, for everything you've accomplished and everything, there's still inhibitions in me going, wow, you know, I'm, I'm talking to Jesse Itzler. It's, you know, it's, and, and you kind of put these self-imposed limitations of, well, I don't want to bother him. I don't want to, you know, stuff like that. So what, but you kind of broke through that and you, you, you eliminated those self-imposed limitations. You made those calls that led to, you know, some of the amazing wins that you've had in your life, which is amazing. So how did you, how, how did you, when you have those self-imposed limitations or you have those uh, barriers where your mind says, well, maybe you shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that or wants to stop, you know, what is that driving force that makes you push through and endure um, to that next level, would you say? You know, when it comes to making that call. Right. Repetition. So repetition. Repetition. 
reconditioning and relearning and reteaching myself um, to keep going. It's just it's just a relentless pursuit, and it's not it's nothing that anybody doesn't have. Yeah. And we'll talk about it. At, we'll talk about it at the you know in front of the group <clears throat> at the at Freedom. Um, we'll talk about it. How do you how do you tap into that reserve tank and how do you get that relentless? Like I'm going to keep going until I get it. Starts with having what you want in your head, believe it or not. It actually starts with the movie and then you have to film the script. Mm -hmm. But um, but there's a method to the madness. But it comes from never letting up. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. it comes from it comes from you know my quote that I of how you do it the, the quote that I love, yeah. how you do anything is how you do everything. Correct. It it starts with the small stuff, you know, and um and being focused and being present. So even a little workout, you know, like if you say I'm, oh, I'm just going to do it tomorrow, or uh, you know what, I'm not going to push through it. I just I'm not having a good day. You're creating an environment in your head that it's okay to quit. Mm -hmm. So I really work hard on the opposite of you know of, and I have techniques that that I use. I created a mantra, and you know we can talk about that as well. Yep. But um, you know how, it's interesting because having a mantra. And just having a word that you can Google and be like, give me a mantra. This too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Okay. It means nothing. It's just words. Unless you conditioned your brain that when you hear it, mm -hmm. like Pavlov's dog, dog you, react, you react to that mantra. So every time that I run, mm -hmm. when I go to a point where I want to stop, I have a mantra that I say. I'm not going to share it. It's no. personal. Mm -hmm. goes in my head. And now is at the point that if I just say it, I know it's game time. I know that I'm about to go through something. I've been here before. I've conditioned myself mentally to go through that barrier. When I was younger and I was making calls and I wanted to get someone on the phone, you know, I wanted it so bad that the consequences didn't matter. Like, you know, like I, I'm going to get to you, Sean, man. I'm going to talk to you. You, I got to learn about real estate. I, you guys are masters. You're bringing in all these great people. And like, you know, you're a gatekeeper for me to be successful. So I got to get into your life. I want to have dinner with you. I want you to think of me, you know, and, and I would just become, I would, Obsessed. that would be my mission, Obs like mission, you know, and I would find out what restaurant you went to and I would be at the bar and show up and I wouldn't be annoying. <laughs> yeah. And I, if I said, you know, um, so yeah, it's, it's, there's no, there's no secret sauce. It's, it's, it's just putting in the, the time and the effort in a smart way. Right. So, so let's talk uh, about your book because um, I know we want to talk about that. So you, you just is you just completed your book, and and you lived with monks. Is that correct? I don't, I don't, I know you talked briefly <laughs> about it, but um, but why why is that hard stuff? Because I, I don't know anything <laughs> about it. So enlighten. <laughs> well, no, I did. I went. I lived. So um, I learned so much having an Navy SEAL come live with me for a month about myself, and I just realized that like the best way that I learn or we learn is through experience. So you can read about motivation, you can read about inspiration, but it usually goes away super fast. Correct. Yeah. But if you live with it or you surround yourself by win around winners or, you know, you pick up habits and that you want to, you know, you want to copy. So I learned so much that I wanted to go and experience other, who's the best? The SEALs are the best, right? Like they're the right. best at, at they're the best fit. They're the best mentally. They're capable of anything. Right. Who's the best? Who's the best spiritually? Who's the happiest? Mm -hmm. You know, you can argue that monks. You know, they're not. They're not stressed out the way we're stressed out. They're not getting bombarded by emails. And I, so I just gave myself a timeout. Mm -hmm. I literally like, gave myself a self-imposed timeout. <laughs> no phone. No email. No newspaper. No anything. And like, let me just think for fifteen days. I'm like, let me just like. When's the last time like you just sat down and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna think. Right. You don't even think anymore. Yeah. And like when you it's amazing what happens. Yeah, when and to get actually, thirty minutes is amazing, but to get fifteen days must be just, you know, revolution. you know, it's just amazing. When when I went there, they gave me my room and um, you know, I shaved my head, my hair's growing back slowly. <laughs> but I went they gave me my room and um I it's a small little room with one bed and I had a little light. And it was obviously incredibly quiet. And I checked in and I had one bowl of soup was what they served for dinner. So I had my eat my soup and I go back to my room and, and they said, you know, tomorrow we'll start a prayer and reflection and meditation wow. <clears throat> at 7 a.m. I'm like, okay. 
what do I do until 7 a.m.? <laughs> yeah, like, I've yeah. never been alone in my... Like, I can't put on Sports Center. I can't watch CNN. I don't have any <laughs> books. It's just me in this room. Oh, man. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I'm going to meditate. I'm not, like, a big meditator, but, like, I'm here. Let me just... Let me jumpstart it with some personal meditation. Right. So as it struck that I set my timer for 20 minutes, and I close my eyes, and, like, you know, immediately I'm thinking about, like, ideas... You know, who do I have to get in touch with? What can I sell? Everything's going to getting bombarded. I'm like, just Jesse, just focus, focus, focus. And I get in a rhythm and I'm breathing and this and that. And I'm like, where's the timer? Like, how is the timer not beat yet? I've been here for like four hours. Yeah. You know, I'm like, this is, I'm like, I should probably just open my eyes. And I'm like, no, the whole point is to get last the damn 20 minutes. So I'm sitting there waiting for the, you know, the timer. The timer is like, it comes to finally. I'm like, Forget it, man. I gotta go. I just gotta open my eyes and see how much time's left. Like, uh -huh. This is crazy. I look down at my at my clock. It's been three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to myself, "How in the world am I gonna last fifteen days here? Yeah, I can't even go three minutes. three minutes." And it just, but it made me realize like how crazy it was. And 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 what happens is when you actually slow down. Yeah. And you actually, you know, don't feel like you have to respond to the email right when you get it mm -hmm. or you know, take control of your own time and you make decisions that you like you really take control of your life. What happens is, aside from the fact that, you know, you, you can think clearer, um, you get a tremendous amount of energy. Mm, really? And the one thing we all want is energy. Correct. Energy is the key to everything. Right. Energy is the key to fighting disease, it's to feeling vibrant, it's to being, you know, successful. You want to walk into a room, you want to sell real estate, you want to, you know, or you want to buy real estate or whatever, you want to negotiate around real estate. The guy with more energy, usually in a better position. You come in low energy, I don't want to deal, do a deal with low energy. Right. You greeted me on the thing. Hey, Jesse's here. You're, you're high energy, man. I want to engage with you. Right. You know? And when you stop making all these decisions, the average American makes over 30,000 decisions a day. Wow. We're just constantly, you know, like, oh, I got to hit Jesse at 130. Who's going to hit his assistant? It's like we're bombarded. When you slow it down, you get this crazy amount of energy. The monks were 75 going on 20. Wow. Wow. And so, anyway... Not to get derailed, but so it was, a, it was an interesting experience, and I'll share it with you guys. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you some of the takeaways. And, and, you know, for me, it was all about how do I take this 1,500 year tradition, mm -hmm. monasticism, what the monks have established over 1,500 years, and apply it to our modern day lives? Like, what are those spirit nuggets of wisdom and happiness? Like, I don't care how much money you have or right. how little money you have, whoever's happiest is winning. Right. That's the score. That's the scorecard. Yeah, and um, you know, and apply it to your life to make you happier. Right. And uh, at the event, um, you did an exercise, a scale and escape, at the happiness meter, which I don't want to talk about now, but I want you to save it for the event because I thought that was incredibly powerful, um, and I think it really impacted the crowd in a in a way where you know uh, it actually got them to realize how happy they are or think they are, you know, and uh, and how happy they could be if they actually focused on. Uh, you know, obviously being happy, but you know, I can totally. see it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to hear about when you, when you talk about at the event about, you know, the takeaways from the do hard stuff. And then you mix that with, you know, living with monks, you know, and, and, and having that time to actually think and, uh, and kind of slow things down and create a, create that placid in, in the, in the world of turmoil and everything's going to just be completely placid is, uh, is an amazing thing. And a lot of people that are watching right now are going to be attending the event. You know, they have families, you know, they have jobs, they have bosses they got to answer to. And then they've got this real estate business on the side that they're trying to make work and to be able to cultivate that energy in, in a way um, by overcoming and doing hard stuff, but then also having the energy like you're going to talk about um, to accomplish those things. That's that I think will give them the ability to 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 break through that five percent and uh, and then transition from a an employee to an actual you know business owner, which all these people want. They just want to transition. They don't know how to do it. 
you know, they have internal limitations on how to do it. They don't know, you know, you know, you know, obviously there's the how to steps, which, you know, that's easy. It's, but we know it's, you know, 80% mental on how to go out and accomplish that. And, uh, and I think you're the, uh, the best person. So, uh, we are excited to have you at the event. Um, like I said, you completely blew everybody away. I, I never heard you speak before, so I didn't really know what to expect. I did read your book and I loved it. Um, but literally I was thoroughly impressed. You know, you, you, you over delivered on all, uh, parts of it. And, uh, I'm really excited to have, uh, which this is a different group. The scale and escape group was more, uh, people that were, um, uh, you know, uh, have already have an established business. These are the, you know, kind of budding entrepreneurs, you know, which, uh, which they need to That's hear cool. what you have to say. That's where I come from. I've been there. Uh, you know, I, I, I know that mindset. I know that pressure. I know that, uh, that stage very well. I lived in that stage for, you know, eight years yeah. before something, really, before it really clicked for me. Yeah. And, um, in a weird way, that's the most exciting stage and and the most and the and the, and the most vulnerable. So uh, I'm happy to share some stories and some you know nuggets to the best that I can and and, uh, and be around the group. Yeah, it's my kind of. That's awesome. Cool, cool. Well, I don't want to take up any more time. You did an amazing job, Jesse. Thank you so much. So, guys, listening right now, go register. Do whatever you got to do. Change your schedule. Do whatever because you are not going to want to miss. Jesse Itzler uh, speaking. It will be uh, a game changer. I know for me, I took some specific things away that I apply in my life, you know, every single day. And uh, I want to thank you for that. And I, and I appreciate you uh, spending some time with us and, uh, and, and you know, basically sharing your story with us. It's amazing. Yeah. The one thing I would add, you know, it's interesting. When I was starting out as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I wish I would have invested a little bit more in myself. Mm -hmm. Like think conferences like this where you bring in speakers and you know, you get the opportunity to network and share stories and get advice. Uh, they weren't, that wasn't available to me when I was in my 20s or early 30s starting out. Or maybe it was, but we didn't have the ability to hear about it through the internet and stuff like this. Right. And my wife, my wife built her business powered by Wayne Dyer CDs. You know, she invested yeah. her in herself by listening to motivational and inspiring um, successful people in audio cassettes and, and CDs um, and memorized them. She was so fascinated by it. And I just encourage people, if you have the opportunity to, if I could do one thing over, that's one thing I would, I would do differently. And even at this stage in my life now, I've had some success, yes, but um, I'm still looking for personal coaches, mentors, uh, I listen to podcasts and I listen to you know things of inspiration. I just invested the time to go live on a monastery, yeah, just to get better. So I appreciate you giving everybody the opportunity to come to an event where they can just better themselves. Yeah, which is uh, which is what's all about. The goal is to make an impact and 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 realize that real estate can be a vehicle where they will give them the opportunity to kind of get the money game out of the way and then really go out and then make a ripple effect and make an impact in other people's lives. So if they can get that out of the way, they get their family taken care of, then the next stage is giving back. And if they can give back in a way, you know, to impact and share their story with other people, that's, you know, you know, that, that just makes the world a better place. So, and you do that so in a phenomenal always, way. My wife always says, start small, think big and scale fast. And that's what you're saying, you know, get, get this is going to be a vehicle to where, where you want to go. Exactly. So cool. All right, guys. Well, uh, join us at Extreme Freedom. Jesse, you are the man. Thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Phenomenal job. And I'm excited to uh, shake your hand here in uh, about uh, two months. Yeah, well, can't wait. Can't wait. Thanks, I can't guys. wait. Okay, I cool. It. Thank you for your time. All right, we just finished the interview with Jesse Itzer. Thank you so much, Jesse, for taking the time uh, with us to share your story. Um, so if you are watching right now and you are on the fence thinking about uh, attending Extreme Freedom 2017, I'm going to tell you right now, this is an event you do not want to miss. Not only will Jesse uh, be sharing his story, but when do you have the ability to surround yourself with a billionaire and have his ideas, have his um, stories, have his recommendations, have his stuff 
basically rub off on you. Um, you know, he's incredibly gracious, and uh, and he is. Um, a, a man where it really truly cares about your success and uh, cares about um, about changing and making an impact in people's lives. So if you're in a situation right now and you're on the fence and you're going, well, should I go? Should I not go? I'm telling you, with the amount of content, when you have all the content, all the information that we share between phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, the triangle effect, all that put together, and then you tie it together with Jesse Itzler's motivation, Kent Clothier's motivation, Pat Precourt's motivation, you put all that together, you have the formula for accomplishing an amazing thing in this life to get you, you know, to the to the five percent, right? He talked about it. Tony Robbins talks about that too. It's 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 the little things that make the big difference. But a lot of people they just do ninety five percent and they stop because the other other five percent is hard. Well, what if you could learn how to have a mantra or things that you could do, tactics that you could do to get into that five percent or over that five percent and accomplish great things, right? You know, so, you know, uh, I mean, me, I'm always looking to try to better myself and to surround myself with some of my Kim is amazing um, and uh, and taking key things that I can apply to my life to become better. And, and that's how we all grow um, in our lives. So I want to invite you. Don't hesitate. Get your ticket now. I would get the, you know, seating that's closest to the stage as possible, our platinum seating, and uh, and do that now. Don't contemplate, consider, evaluate, discuss, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't do it, don't post on it, don't put it off. Get it done, schedule it, and prepare to be blown away, not only with the content, not only with the networking, some of the most successful um, real estate wholesalers across the entire country that have built businesses. If you're a fix and flip guy and you're looking for properties, definitely be there. If you're a syndication guy, definitely be there. If you're a, a, a wholesaler, a budding wholesaler, or done a couple deals, you wanna be there because the content is driven to help you go out from where your current position is and to become a uh, an entrepreneur and build a hundred thousand dollar a month business that that's the entire premise of the event and then give you all the tools the mental tools to go out and accomplish great things we've had more success stories and more people come out of the event that uh, that have uh, literally changed their lives not only financially um, mentally physically emotionally spiritually and they, and, and they're complete different people um, and uh, if you are sick of being um, you know the same old same old the whole, same old mundane life that's just you know boring then come out to extreme freedom you're gonna get an injection of uh, motivation <laughs> excitement and uh, true techniques to change your life so register now uh, click the link below register go to extreme freedom live register now before seats are sold out we will sell out again we sell out every single year and people are uh, are basically turned away every single year because they don't register or they procrastinate so register now grab your seat and i'll see you shortly take care and god bless